and welcome to uh, uh, a look at Prague's recent developments. Um, a, a number of photographs on the front page there have been chosen deliberately. Um, the uh, middle left is the, the newest tram in the fleet in Prague. Um, above it is one of the Ringhofer cars that just happened to turn up at, at Schmikov when I was there. Next to that is one of the latest batch of the Tatra KT8 D5s that have been bought from Miskolc in Hungary and completely refurbished uh, and turned out. Uh, and you'll see more of those later on. Uh, down on the bottom row, um, there's the T3 Coupe, uh, which has become quite a famous uh, rebuild in, in Prague. Uh, next to that is one of the, the large training fleet uh, and more of those later. And finally, the one on the bottom right is a, a Tatra T6 A5, uh, of which there are no more in service, though three are available for use in the heritage fleet. And for some reason, my screen has frozen. Oh, there we go. So, quick look at one of the busiest junctions in Prague, just over a minute in length. So, here goes. <laughs> on the clock in the corner just before half past six in the morning very much the morning peak it's already trams that have been out since half past five half past uh, five o'clock half past five returning to depot and that's signified by the reverse coloured bar on the top of the destination. And for someone who's been photographing the fleet in Prague since 2005, it's quite worrying that the T15 or 15, it's going to 15T um, is becoming the dominant tram in the fleet. waving each other through. The 15T now has become the dominant tram for all over adverts. And if you haven't already fallen asleep on that, let's move on to have a look. So a quick course in the, the Czech language. Um, for those of you who are interested, Czech language uses a silent D uh, in a lot of uh, what it uh, uses, usually followed by a V or a J. So the composer is Vojak uh, and the terminus along the, the line on the Vulta is Dvorce, Dvorce, sorry. An R with a hat followed by an A, E or I is an Rj sound, so Sidlisti Jepe and Zikanova. 
uh, ending with a C or an I-C-E is It's or It's a. So those of you who regularly listen to Classic FM and hear them talking about the Pardubici Symphony Orchestra, it's the Pardubica, uh, Depots at Vokovica, Terminus is Dublitza, and then the de there's Pankratz where there's a depot and Florence. And S-K-E on the end of a sentence means belonging to. So for instance, Wenceslas Square, is Vaslavsky Namisti. It's the square belonging to King Vaslav. And then one of the strange ones is a word ending with CCE uh, is Chise, Divadlo na Fidlovacise. And then, of course, who needs vowels? Uh, the, the word for Thursday is Schwertek, and Vroch is a hill. So moving quickly on then. And I stress this isn't going to be death by PowerPoint. It's the largest tram network in, in Czechia. Uh, it'll be nearly 180 kilometers by the time all the current projects are go, have gone through. Currently 879 trams in the fleet, 14 electric buses, and there are not 15 trolley buses because they haven't been delivered. They can't get the, um, the parts. Uh, for the batteries which come from China. Uh, so at the moment, the trolleybus service line 58 isn't running, though they have got a demonstrator which occasionally provides one journey an hour on that route. But all the time I was there, the trolleybus was laid up so it couldn't be used. First trams were in 1875 and were horse drawn, electrification coming in 1891. It's standard gauge and like the rest of Europe, is on the right-hand side of the road. And changed in the 1930s, they were on the left-hand side till 1934, I think. The trams are operated by DPP, the Pravni Podnik Klavnia Mesta Prahi, and all of the trams in the current fleet were built in Czechia, either by Ringhofer, Tatra or Škoda. And recent extensions, which we'll look at some of them, um, have been to Radliska, Nazaraji Podbaba, Jahadni Mesto, Pankrats, Slavni Nazaraji, Halinia, and Slivanets is uh, currently the extension from Halinia being built at the moment. Depot Hostivaj, Libush, Dedina, uh, Vaslavsky Namisti is about mm -hmm. to be built. And finally, Sukdal and Bohanis have been signed off. There's 26 daytime tram routes. A line 23 always has the historic cars on it and provides a backup for the 22. Uh, and there are some of the heritage trams go on lines 2 and 21. 22 is the tram to the castle and it operates every minute um, and is always packed. It's also the best place to get your pocket picked if you're not standing by the horological clock in Old Town Square. Uh, because they do so much relaying of track, um, tram lines are curtailed and temporary tram lines are put in and they're numbered 30 to 39. The night services are now numbered 91 to 99. And there are three heritage premium fare services, uh, which are numbered 41 to 43. Um, but that will all change when the Dvorzhevsky Bridge opens between Zlikov and Zvorce. Um, where the whole network will be recast uh, because it, it puts another bridge across the Vultava much further downstream. So a bit for Tim. Track work. Uh, Grand Union Junctions, there are three. Um, the one on the left there is Palmovka 1, as I call it, because there's three junctions at Palmovka. Um, the one in the middle uh, is Strosmajerovo Namusti and the one on the right is Palatskeo and Amusti. There are three quarter junctions, five of them at Palmovka 2, Stary Club 18, Otakarova 1, Ipe Pavlova and Andiel. And then there are 60 other junctions, most of which are deltas. Some are deltas with the line going straight across as well. So there are a number of depots um, and each depot 
uh, has a, a number starting with uh, a, a straight hundred. So flobatine is the lowest alphabetically, so it's number one hundred. Um, it was one of the, the biggest single span depots um, ever built and unfortunately suffered from concrete cancer. Um, so it has recently been closed and there's some good footage on YouTube of it being blown up. Um, simplest way to get the whole thing down was to blow it up. Um, and there's some pictures when it was in use along the top line there and on the bottom is the picture taken last year of the site cleared uh, you'll notice the, the few redundant trams over on the right hand side of that picture uh, they've since gone to ukraine and then the other two on the bottom the middle and right hand one are taken this year um, with the first signs of the new depot being built depot 200 is kobelisi uh, which is on the north of the of the city um, traditional tram depot built in the 50s um, recent developments uh, around there uh, with the flats a lot of the uh, people living in the flats were complaining about tram movements at all hours of the day <clears throat> and so they fitted the uh, acoustic screen around the edge of the depot and it is amazing um, I was stood in that middle ground there with my friend from Prague Transport when a tram came round and you could hear it coming up the side of the depot and it just glided past us totally silently because the acoustic screen just eats every bit of noise. Um, right hand top is Kobelisi's snowplow tram. Um, it's also home to the uh, um, Marici Vuz, as it's called, it's the overhead line testing car. Um, and one of the only T3s in the fleet with a half pantograph. It's also the home to uh, all the remaining Skoda 14T trams. And in the right hand picture, just in front of 9117, is one of the motorized snow plows that uh, connects onto the front of uh, three adapted T3s, uh, which we'll see more of later. Motol. Uh, Depot 300 is based on the other side of the river going towards Jeppe. Um, it's the home for maintenance of all the Skoda 15Ts and that includes repairs to pretty bad accident damage such as 9392 there. 8635 was one of a huge batch of T6A5s that uh, lived in the depot but is now gone. Uh, most of those have gone to Ukraine. Pankrats on the other side of the Voltaver again, in the east of the city, uh, is the home of the training fleet um, and is possibly, until Flow Beitin is built, one of the most modern technological depots uh, they've got. It's got automatic tram location. Um, so when a tram comes in through the gates which is just by the barrier in the top left there it stops until its number comes up on that signal you can see and then that signal tells the tram exactly what to do uh, it will go through the wash and round the back of the depot coming back round on the far side of that top picture and then the driver will know exactly which lane to put it in and once it's parked he pushes a button on the tram, which then stores it on the computer so everybody knows exactly where the tram is for the following day's output. Straznitsa um, is one of the oldest depots now in use. Uh, the top picture is taken quite early on, I think about 2009. Uh, and if you look at the trams in the depot, they're all very early T3s with just the service number on the front um, and that depot retained all of the older T3s right until the point that they were taken out of service. It's now also the home for all of the T3R PLFs, which are the low floor examples of trim maroon and silver, though that's changing as you'll see shortly. Um, 
the picture on the bottom right as an interloper in the depot, which is one of the Skoda 14Ts, which used to be allocated to that depot, but they've all been moved following uh, uh, problems they have with the trams. Sreshovitsa um, is going up towards um, Petrini and towards the airport and is the home of the tram museum as well, but also the heritage fleet. So all of the heritage fleet is allocated to Sreshovitsa, though some of them at the moment are working out of Zishkov depot. Um, so there's a, a few of the um, one-offs that they have in the fleet. 5500, 5602, which are the blue and cream ones. Um, there's all sorts of former tram numbers and destination boards on the wall in there. It's quite spectacular to see. And the overhead testing line car was there on one of the days I was there. Vokovica, again, is on the line towards the airport. Um, and was the last of the depots that didn't have a run round. So originally the trams had to uh, arrive at the depot, go up to the far end of this track in the foreground, and then reverse uh, to get into the depot. Any trams coming in on this side of the depot uh, had to reverse in from the main road. Um, all the trams are um, single-ended at Vokovica, so they have a backup controller uh, that the, the driver can access um, but three or four years ago because it was becoming a problem and they were relaying the track outside they actually put in a, a loop within the depot which you can see in the bottom right uh, pictures so the trams can now come in as normal take the right hand track past the the sign on hall which is on the right of the top picture and then go around the depot come out and then reverse into the line they need to be in without doing it from the main road. Zishkov is in northeast of the city. Um, again, was a home to uh, the other half of the T6A5 fleet. Um, has a large fleet of T3s. Um, has the latest of the T, uh, 15 T4s, which are the newest trams in the fleet, and recently has had the entire uh, floor relayed with new pits that are based on uh, concrete rather than on uh, metal, because the metal was suffering from fatigue. Whilst Club 18 is being rebuilt, um, they uh, ploughed up the staff social club playing fields, uh, three football pitches, several tennis courts and bowling greens to lay an entirely new depot, um, which is seen here. It's adjacent to the central tramcar workshops, which is Ostredni, Dilni, Dupravni, Opodniko, um, and it's now home to just short of 100 trams and most of the KT8 D5s, which are the double-ended ones you can see in the bottom left-hand picture. Across the way from there is the central tramcar workshops, where seemingly nothing is impossible. Um, I'm just taking a few of the pictures that I've taken in there. Top left, <coughs> is one of the new T3R PLF2s, of which there will be 65 when they've completed them all. Uh, and that's uh, 8287 um, being fitted out. Uh, the interesting thing is they don't buy custom made wiring looms. Um, they make their own uh, and there are channels down either side of the tram. You can just see one to the left of the, the uh, stairs there and they have a plan for each tram and they measure out the wire and cut it and then connect it all together before it goes into the tram. Um, middle top 8226 one of the T3RPs 
uh, had been involved in a serious front end accident and it's being rebuilt with the new front end about to be grafted on now it's got a new underframe. To the right is another one of the T3 RPLF 2s uh, with the body as it's been delivered and the bodies are, are manufactured uh, in a place called Sumperk um, by the Pragoimex group which is a tramcar building group um, which is a, a, a an offshoot of what used to be Tatra um, and this part um, is part of Prague Transport and uh, builds quite a lot of stuff for quite a lot of the operators. Um, as I said, they can build almost anything. They can also scrap almost anything. 8428 in the bottom picture there have been involved in a serious accident and its running gear uh, has been donated to become the undergear for one of the T3 RPLF2s. And as you can see there, it's sat on uh, pony trucks and it's gradually being broken up within the workshops. Not many actually get broken up in the workshops. They're usually broken up outside. Uh, centre um, picture at the bottom is two of the KT8 D5 double-ended, double-sided cars um, that uh, are, have come from Miskolc in Hungary. Um, they've been bought because Prague didn't particularly want to go down the lines of brand new double-ended, double-sided cars and they were in particularly good condition. And of course, anything that goes through the central tramcar workshops on a major refurb is stripped back to virtually nothing and started again. So 9104 on the right there is now in service and that's the front part of 9106. The, you can just see on the front of it, 9106A. So that, that's pre-prepared. It's got its first base coat on and will go in uh, to get its main uh, livery once it's got the rest of its panels on. Uh, to the right is one of the Skoda 15, uh, 14Ts that uh, is being rebuilt into a 14T4. I'll explain that after. Uh, and that particular tram is 9150. Uh, and if anyone's watched the uh, Netflix film The Grey Man, uh, 9150 is used to drive at stupid speeds through the centre of Prague and not always on the track um, and eventually gets totally destroyed. It's very much like a James Bond film if you've not watched it. It's worth watching, it's really good. Um, but uh, the film company came along to Prague and said, we want to borrow one of your trams we want to take it off its underframe and put it on rubber driving wheels so we can drive it through the streets of Prague uh, and Prague Transport. So, well, actually, you can have 9150, but when you're finished with it, uh, you're required to uh, pay for the full refurb. Um, and so they got that one built absolutely free. Back to the more traditional trams in the fleet now as we look through the fleet types. The T3M and T3M DVCs um, are a, a group, small group of trams, there's only 18 of them now. Uh, there used to be just short of 100 of them. And uh, the, the latest version, if you look at 8009 on the left hand side, it's got the traditional uh, service number hanging off the mirror and a service number plate inserted inside behind uh, the glass in the picture to the left, uh, to the right of that. It's now got electronic front number, though it's still got the card in the windscreen saying where it's going. But on the side, it's now got electronic destination blinds. And as I say, there's 18 of those currently uh, around though on my visit to Prague in April this year, none of them were in service. They were all parked up at uh, Central Tramcar Workshops, but they were runners, they weren't, weren't for scrap. <coughs> T3RPV was uh, one batch 
of, of 35 trams, that, that's down to 33 and about to drop into the 20s as they give up their running gear for the, the T3 RPLF2s. Um, and they are fitted with, uh, just get this right, chop, these are fitted with chopper control um, so that they're different to the rest of the fleet. Though in recent years, they can now be connected to the, the T3 RPs, which are the more modern version. And quite a few of them did carry all over advertising, uh, though that's finished now. Most of the advertising is carried by the, fifth, the Skoda 15Ts. Small class of T3 RPs when they decided to, to upgrade the fleet. All the, all the T3 RPs are, do, are, are being donated from earlier T3s, um, usually in the 6,000 fleet numbers. Uh, but the, this batch, 8211 to 8245, um, was rebuilt at Pars Nova at Sunperk, which I mentioned earlier on. And these have got Thyristor control and they very much make the same sound as Blackpool centenary trams do with very high pitched uh, noise, but uh, they, they make most of the noise when they're accelerating, whereas the Blackpool ones made most of the noise when they were braking. Uh, bottom picture shows 8245 having been in the wars, um, and that will be about to go to the central tram car workshops to be repaneled. And there's a Skoda 15T behind that's similarly been involved in an accident. Any pictures of the trams involved in accidents in here, I have got permission of Prague Transport to uh, show them uh, because I don't like showing uh, trams in the wars unless the company says it's okay. The big batch of T3s are the T3 RPs that were built in Prague's own workshops. Um, 8 to 300 on the left. Um, if you notice, it's fleet numbers in a different position because it's got a little uh, hatch underneath as well as the one above for attaching the jumper cables. The bottom hatch is for connecting to one of the motorised snow ploughs, uh, more of which you'll see after. Eighty-five, sixty-three in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, was the last of the uh, maroon and uh, of the red and primrose batch um, because 8564, there you are on the left hand side at the top, uh, was done maroon and silver to be attached to the back of the maroon and silver T3 RPLFs, the low floor ones. Uh, but as you can see by the middle picture, it's since been repainted into red and primrose. 8579, top right is the last of the T3 RPs. Again, 8500 at the bottom is one of the snowplow um, vehicles, hence the higher fleet number. And 8530 bottom right is also one of the snowplow vehicles, but it's also been fitted with cab air conditioning, um, which is happening to quite a few of the higher numbered ones now, uh, including 8496, which is seen there at Club of Chepi. The T3 RPLF Mark 1s, uh, 8251 to 8283 originally, 33 of them, all painted maroon and silver uh, with the rather flashy silver bits around the low floor section. Uh, they're longer than the standard T3s, um, which caused some initial issues with them around uh, the tramway extension to Radliska, um, which is uh, seen in, in the Photograph bottom left. Um, then almost out of the blue, two more arrived, 8284 and 8285, uh, which are still Mark 1s, but they were delivered in uh, red and primrose. They're slightly different inside. Uh, they've got uh, <coughs> television screens instead of scrolling information uh, for stop announcements. Then in 2019, Prague announced that they will be taking another 65 T3R PLF, which is a TR, 
TR, T3RP with the low floor section, um, hence the LF. Um, 82, 86 is in service. You can spot them straight away because they've got single, in the, uh, single windscreen wipers on the front. Um, and when you get inside, they've got two plus one seating rather than one plus one seating. Um, 82, 87 is almost complete. 82, 93, 82, 94 on the top there have been delivered but they were built by a, a, an offshoot company of Pragoimex um, and they were built, uh, they were delivered complete as was 8295, which arrived last week. Bottom left, you can see one in build in the central tramcar workshops and the other two bottom photographs are that the shells at the central tramcar workshops are waiting their turn in the line. These are quite spectacular trams because they are T3 based, so they're fully mechanical, they never break down. Um, and uh, Prague has decided on this to be the, the, the future single tram rather than a long tram uh, for the routes that don't need huge capacity. Um, which will be quite interesting because a lot of the other companies <coughs> in the Czech Republic have gone for the Evo 1 and the Evo 2, which are radical rebuilds of T3s. Um, but Prague tried one and decided they did stick with the T3 RPLF. The Tatra KT8 D5 started life like 9001 on the left hand side there, um, with no low floor sections. And in the middle, 20 teens, uh, they started rebuilding them. Um, so 9001 there at the top left is now 9051 there at the bottom left. So when the low floor section was added to the middle of the tram, they just added 50 to the fleet number. Uh, 9036 there was involved in a really bad accident at Florence with a coach. Um, and at first, everyone thought it was going to be scrapped because it was so badly twisted. Um, but if you look to the right, 9086, which would be 9036 rebuilt with a central low floor section, is the same tram having been straightened and rebuilt. And then there's a couple of other pictures of 9077 arriving at a tram stop called Gerlagiska and 9097 having a refurb in the central tramcar workshops. There's more KT8 D5s because they need them for the expansion of the system. As I said earlier, they don't want to buy brand new double-ended, double-sided. So they picked up two trams from Strasbourg, number 23 on the left, number 21 in the middle, and they were used um, to make tram 9098, which is the centre at the bottom there, and tram 9056, um, bottom left. 9056 would have been the rebuild of tram 9006, but that was when it was only a couple of years old, involved in a very, very bad accident at Novi Club 18, um, where the tram ended up on its side. A uh, driver was killed and the tram was sub subsequently uh, scrapped. So there never was a 9056 until they acquired the two trams from Strasbourg. A 9048, which would have become 9098, was chosen to be kept as a museum vehicle, still with its full high floor section. Um, then they had chance to buy a batch from Miskolc in Hungary, uh, which looked extremely tatty when they arrive, but they're in extremely good condition underneath. And they've been rebuilt uh, to become 1999 to uh, 9110, and the final three, 9171 to 9173, following on from the T14s. So 1999 there is seen at the new terminus at Slavnina uh, Draji, which is the central railway station. There were 150 
Tatra 26A5s. Um, but gradually over the years, they've been whittled down to the point where they took them all out of service, parked them all up at, at uh, Hlob 18. And you, uh, the Ukraine, Kharkiv, and Kiev started buying them. Um, but uh, that obviously has been accelerated um, since the, the war in the Ukraine. And all of the last ones were donated to Ukraine by the tra private transport company. The tram top left, 8600, is uh, purporting to be a T6A5, but it was actually classed as a T6A5.3. It's basically, it's a T6A5 body on a T3 underframe. And it was always a one-off, very rarely went out. Uh, quite by chance that I turned round and saw it coming around the corner at Narodny Divadlo there, and it's since been scrapped. The Škoda 14T started arriving in 2008. There were three prototypes, 9111, 2 and 3, um, which had a different colour interior, um, and... Uh, have been very troubled, I think is the best way to describe them. Um, they're known, translated from uh, Czech, as the angry lizards um, because of that sort of angry look at the front. They're designed by Porsche, um, but they, as they move around curves, the, the articulations hiss quite loudly, um, and hence why they're big came known as the Angry Lizards. Um, the entire batch were taken out of service a few years ago um, because of corrosion problems and them splitting in half. Well, if a five-part trunk was split in half, uh, they, they were splitting on the articulations because the corrosion uh, was, was the metal fatigue. Uh, so the entire fleet was taken out of service <clears throat> look at the top right hand picture they were all dumped at Club 18 or at the central tram car workshops and uh, gradually they've been rebuilt um, before the, the great withdrawal um, most of them were used as all over advert trams and some pretty colourful all over adverts as well Now, one of the things about the Skoda 14T as well was the high floor sections all had inward facing seats. Um, Czech people do not like sitting facing each other. Um, and it was always a good way if a 14T came along. I always used to say to Christy and my wife, head towards either the middle of the tram or the front of the tram. And she said, why? I said, because there'll be nobody sat there. Um, and they traditionally were the last seats to fill up. As they refurbished them, um, they made them into 14 T4Ms, uh, which is the picture on the, the right-hand side, and every seat in the tram now either faces uh, forwards or backwards, so they're, they're a lot more popular. And where you've got backward-facing seats facing forward-facing seats, you tend to get groups of usually youngsters, sat in groups. First 14 T4M on the left hand side at the top there was 9148. Um, it's just been sorted, it's got its fleet numbers on but covered up and its logo is about to go on as well. And there's now more of those than there are of the originals. And they're a lot more successful, they've dealt with the corrosion problems and, and you very rarely see one of those laid up. Because of the issues with the Skoda 14T, oh, the, one of the things with the 14T is it's got three um, effectively trucks rather than bogies, which are fixed to the underframe of the tram. And effectively the tram pivots around the, uh, the curves uh, and quite jerky round curves. And they had to do all sorts of things with the profiles of the wheels. 
and ended up with them only working on certain services that didn't have sharp curves for a while. <coughs> so the original batch, which was going to exceed 150, was curtailed to 60. And Skoda effectively told, if you want any more work from Prague, you need to design a tram that's uh, basically suitable for us. And the Skoda 15T, the four city tram, uh, was the outcome of that. It now sits on four bogies um, and there were two prototypes. So an order was placed for 125 uh, going up to 250 Skoda 15Ts um, and they began to enter service and um, entered service about 32 a year. Um, 9201 being the very first one of the batch, um, 9243 in the top. Um, at the middle was the first one to be trialled with air conditioning. Um, it's got the air conditioning fitted and uh, uh, the word in check underneath. Um, 9300 bottom left is the 100th one to be delivered and there's an advert in the side windows um, proclaiming the fact it is the the twenty uh, the the hundredth one, and finally, uh, the last of the initial batch ninety three twenty five is seen there. That's actually March approaching uh, uh, Petrini um, after a, a light snowfall. Having trialled the air conditioning systems. Uh, they decided, oh, 9207 was fitted with uh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> they decided to uh, modify the final 125, and they nominated those as 15T4s. Um, they introduced a new livery, uh, which included the white stripe down the side and the yellow front, um, and their 9326 onwards to 9450, uh, 9450 in the top right there. Um, almost straight away after the um, the uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russia, a lot of the trams in the fleet got the Ukrainian flag on the front dash. The 9450 is seen there, and a lot of tram stops were changed into blue and yellow. Um, there was a celebration held in Prague for the uh, 55th anniversary of the uh, Tatra uh, T3. Um, 9355 uh, was chosen as one of the trams in the parade and was named uh, Frantisek Kardaus, who was the, the man who designed the T3 tram. Um, since then, a number of the, uh, the T3s, uh, T15s have been named, all similar with the, the white vinyl. Uh, 9400 is named Vaslav Pzeniska. Um, who was involved in the modernization of the tram system in Prague. So 9450 is currently the newest new tram. Uh, obviously the, there are rebuilds going on, uh, but it's the newest tram in the fleet at the moment, though there are tenders out for a further 250 new trams. And strangely enough, the tenders specify a tram exactly the same length as a 15T, exactly the same passenger carrying capacity, um, but there are a number of tram manufacturers who are tendering. Aside then from the main fleet, there's quite a, a large fleet of training trams, most of which are turned out in various versions of this livery. Chivichny Vuz training tram, um, and I only found out this year when I spotted one accelerating that uh, the higher numbered ones uh, that have got the, the full width destinations have actually got uh, a joystick control like modern tram cars have got, whereas the rest of the T3s in the fleet have a traditional accelerator and brake like an automatic car. So you can train on different types of tram, albeit on the T3. Every depot has a snowplow tram and they suffice for a number of years. Um, 
simply with the, the plows at the front. Um, but as weather has got worse in the winter, um, more radical methods uh, were, were required. And um, I talked about those three trams at the bottom there, 8300, 8500 and 8530, which have been modified uh, to connect up one of these really heavy powered snow plows. So you will get 8300 connected actually to 4607 and another T3 behind. So you'll actually have um, motorized two and a half T3s. So one hell of a lot of power to shift snow. Um, I've included the picture of 8530 there at the bottom because it's very, very rare uh, for a T3 with air conditioning on the roof uh, to go at the back of a set, but 8530 there is the, the trailing car of two. There's works cars as well. Uh, 5521 you've seen a couple of times over the presentation. Um, that's the overhead line testing car. It's got a half pantograph. Um, the two mini T3s, 5550 and 5551, are basically the work shunters that move trams around the central tram car workshops. Not surprisingly, they've got the power of a T3, so they move at fairly big speeds around the, the workshops. 5572 at the bottom is the uh, Mazaski Vuz, um, which is a, a T3 flat back, which has got a huge grease tank on the back of it that you can see in the bottom right picture there. And it's actually, if you look at the middle bottom picture, it always works on tram car working 401 every day, which has a different route every day uh, with a driver allocated to it. And it goes round the system, lubricating points and sharp curves. So you see that quite a lot. Then moving to the heritage fleet, Prague obviously has got a huge heritage fleet um, made up of, of Ringhofer uh, as well as Tatra trams and as well as being used on the heritage routes um, they are used on vast amounts of private hire um, and they appear in a lot of uh, films because obviously Prague is one of the biggest filming locations in the world it now claims to be bigger than Hollywood and Barandoff Studios is based at uh, Sidlisi Barandoff um, on the outskirts of Prague. And those trams are absolutely perfect for period films. A recent film called Anthropoid about the assassination of, uh, of Heydrich, who was uh, the Nazi governor of Moravia, uh, in involves a couple of the, um, uh, the Ringhofer cars. There are more modern ones in the heritage fleet, such as early T3s and various versions of the T3, right up to the very last T3 to be built uh, for Prague 7292, which has been preserved in the condition it was in when it, it last uh, operated on a daily basis. Um, more recent um, developments have been uh, there were no um, T2s left in the fleet apart from um, a prototype, which is in the museum. And um, they managed to acquire two uh, from Liberets, um, regauge them and rebuild them. 6003 in the middle at the top there um, is a representative of them when they were new with the single headlight. And 6004 is a representation of the final version of them before they were withdrawn from service. And there are some of the T3Ms in the Heritage Fleet as well. And 8042 has just been completely rebuilt and repainted uh, in Bruno. Uh, and the scene there sat in the, the entrance to Zishkov Depot. Then, Prague Transport was approached by a lady called Anna Masarykova, 
who wanted to do something with a T3 um, that was exciting. Um, they came up with the idea of a T3 coupe, um, which is shown here. Um, it's seen in the top left hand picture operating on quite a nice day, but with its rear windows um, closed in. Um, it's got plastic uh, implants that go on the, the, the back windows. Um, but it's fitted out um, very much as a fun tram. Um, it's even got a bar, as you can see in the bottom left hand picture. And uh, they, they covered virtually everything when it came to the design of the tram, um, including the, the glass window lights, um, a la English electric Blackpool trams, and the T3 Coupe logo. Um, that picture in the top right is actually the screen behind the driver and it's frosted into the glass. And as you'll see, it's very popular on private hires. Fresh of it's the depot where it lives. The museum is on the left hand side underneath the clock, and the, the heritage working side is to the right of the tram. So the bar in operation there. And by the number of people waving, they've probably already been to the bar a few times. And the museum, as of course, is to the left. Fantastic museum. Um, everything in there works. So when they hit a, a big number, like 140th anniversary, everything comes out and goes through the streets of Prague. And a number of the trams are fitted with trolleys, which obviously the system isn't set up for anymore. And they couple up like pony trucks to the back where two guys sit in the back with the trolley attached to a rope and every time they go across the junction they have to trolley it across. But the, the wonderful thing about it is everything in there works. Now I'm back to more track uh, for Tim. i quickly run through some of the, the developments. Uh, La Rover was the second to last of the turning triangles. The trams used to come up to the top and back in, where you can see 8728 backing in, and then come out again onto the main line. And it was decided to extend the track um, from La River up to a place called Radliska, which is about half a mile up the road, and to put in a, a turning circle. And uh, that opened in 2011, I think. So it takes in three extra stops. Originally, uh, trams turned on a big, massive turning circle in front of the, uh, the Crown Plaza Hotel there at Podbaba. Um, uh, but the recent development um, is a new station uh, further down, uh, just before the River Voltava, um, a station name in Czech is Nandaraji. So the, the, state, the new tram terminus is now called Nandaraji Podbaba. And as you can see in the, the pictures centre right, and the trams now just go straight through the middle of what used to be the turning circle uh, onto a, a newly built turning circle right by the railway station and by the river. And shortly they're building a cable car across the river, which will start adjacent to the tram station. A lot of tram track was closed when the Prague Metro was built in the 70s. Um, but now with uh, the city concentrating on getting people out of their cars and onto public transport, parts of the old system as well as entirely new bits are opening up. And the first section is 
um, covering an, an old section of track in Pankrats. The bottom left picture shows a tram turning where all trams had to go to get to Pankrats Tram Depot, which is the terminus on the system. Uh, and the track in the foreground is new track, replicating what was there before. Um, there's now a triangular junction and they go up as far as uh, Pankrat's metro station, which is uh, opposite 9071 sat there at the stub terminus. Uh, the plans are now to connect that beyond there, down the road towards the buildings in the, 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 the background in the top middle picture to Bujeviska and eventually around to Spozhilov, which is already on the system. Um, an old tram turning circle that disappeared many, many years ago is Zaharadny Mesto, and the top two pictures show the park, the paths of which follow the old tram turning circle. Um, and bottom left picture shows um, basically a parking ground under the flyover, which has been very derelict for years, um, but now um, a new terminus has been built at Jahar Adni Mesto under the flyover and you can see the trams parked up there on the turning circle. Um, trams used to go past the railway station but with the coming of the metro they were disconnected so there's some photographs there um, of the track work uh, disconnected um, and then uh, in the middle of last year that it was reconnected, only a stub so far, as far as where 1999 is parked in the bottom left picture there. Um, and it's very handy for when they're doing work on the metro uh, to get people to the railway station. Uh, that eventually will carry on along that street and feed out to the top of Wenceslas Square, which is also being connected back to the tram system. And again, bottom right picture is 93.99, passing the new junction that's now been reconnected. Depot Hostivage has always been a metro station. Metro station being in the middle background on the, the top middle photograph. Um, and those photographs are taken in March 2022 um, on the, the visit before last when they were just about to start work um, with Eurovia funding um, to build a new tram and bus interchange with the Metro. And the pictures at the bottom show um, the outcome of that. Um, it's nicknamed the Magic Roundabout um, because of the number of uh, circles that the trams go round. If they're coming in on the termina terminating tram to depot has to eventually go around the middle and then go and park up and then come round again to go around the outside to leave. Uh, trams going up to the central tram car workshops, line 16 comes right around the outside. And it's actually quite spectacular to see what they've managed to lay and get operational. Um, I mean, this is April 2023, but uh, that opened in August 2022, when in March it was basically a muddy puddle in the middle of nowhere. Um, and when you look at the amount of track that's involved and look at how long it's taken to lay uh, a short section in Blackpool or a short section in Wolverhampton, it's amazing what they've achieved. Um, originally, Sidlisti Barandov was the, the terminus, which is to the right of the top left hand picture there. That's now been extended um, just short of two kilometres uh, up to uh, a suburb of Prague that's growing very fast called Holinia. Um, and the pictures on the top are a couple of weeks before it opened. Um, the bottom left hand picture. <coughs> is one that a, a friend of mine took on the opening day. Uh, they always turn up with heritage trams and, and, and special trams for the opening. Um, and 
The other two pictures are um, taken in April this year. Uh, and if you look beyond the tram in the middle, uh, at the bottom, you can see they've already started work on the extension, which will carry on for another two and a half kilometres to Slivernet, uh, which will open next year and should hopefully be open by the time I get there in April or May. And there's just two stops on the system, Holinia Terminus and um, one stop in between, which has got a huge, lengthy, unpronounceable name. The next extension is well on with, and um, since those photographs are taken on the, the bottom there, uh, the, the stop platform's in place, the track is all concreted in and, and tarmacked, and it's due to open in June this year, and that's from uh, Sidlisti Madrani, or Levskehu, uh, up to a place called Libush, um, and effectively um, that's another two and a half kilometres of new track to a growing suburb. Um, the, the top photographs, uh, top drawings are the official photographs from DPP Prague. Um, and the trams have come up round the curves in the bottom left hand picture, uh, up this main road, past the bus turning circle, and then the, the sharp left hand turn, um, which then leads up to. Bush turning circle, which is here. Phenomenal laying of, tr of track rate in, in Prague, it's, it's huge. Another extension that is well underway uh, is from Divoka Schalke to Dedinia, um, and eventually the tracks will continue from Dedinia to the airport, um, because it's about one and a half kilometres when it finishes at Dedinia to actually get to the airport. Again, artist's impression from the transport company at the top, uh, but real life photographs in April this year on the bottom. So the future, um, lots going on. Um, Zlikov to Dvorce of the new Dvorzhevsky bridge is well underway. Um, Vaslavsky and Amisi Wenceslas Square uh, when they, they closed the museum to um, do a full refurbishment, they decided rather than cause any more uh, interference, uh, they'd lay the track. So the track is actually in place between the two pieces of the museum. And in April this year, <coughs> Metro staff, which is, is the works company, uh, were moving uh, utility uh in Wenceslas Square so they could put the track in which will go down either side of the square. Next project is Kobilisi to Bohinitsa, which is an, another big housing estate. Um, then the next ones are, are further apart but all these will be finished by 2030. Sukdal is an extension from Nadraji Podbaba. Na Florenci <coughs> Is, is a new extension in the Florence area, uh, effectively a, a third parallel track to get out of the centre. Um, then, um, as I, I said before, when you, you get to Pankrat's terminus, the plan is to extend from uh, there to Budjevska and also uh, to extend from there to Dvorza. And then the, the link that creates the loop is Kodovska to Spozhilov to Opatov to Haje, and then finally uh, Potsaniska, um, which I'm rather surprised that is last because when they built the estate, they, they put a massive um, a central reservation in. Uh, so to me, it would be the easiest one to build because it's just a case of putting a connection in uh, from Vinaradska into Potsaniska, but there'll be reasons for it. I'm talking of Zlikov to Dvorza. Um, there's the connection from the main line at Dvorza on the top, uh, from Leovar on the bottom, and you can actually see in the right-hand side pictures um, the preparations going in for the bridge, the bridge supports going in. So they're moving a pace. Not really trams, but 
because they've got trams, uh, they can use electric buses with pantographs. Um, and there's 14 of these. Um, they've been in service over a year. Um, in 2022, they were struggling to get more than two or three on the road in any one day. Um, but this year, all 14 were out most days. And the two prototypes, 4001 and 4002, are shown there at uh, Zelivske, who and at uh, uh, Palmovka. Trolley buses, I hope to put some pictures in of the new trolley buses, which will look like the one on the top left. Uh, but because of semiconductors and chips that can't be accessed, the buses are all built and sat at uh, Skoda's workshops, but can't be used. So uh, no photographs, unfortunately. Uh, prototype one running with its trolley booms down on the top right. Um, and then um, second prototype 9506 running on line 58, which is the first trolley bus route up to Letniani, uh, and then they borrowed one of the articulated buses from Plazen um, and operated that, but as I say, none this year. Quick look at the liveries. Standard livery is red and primrose. Initially, the KT8D5s were delivered in that, though it didn't seem to do them much. Uh, you know, the, the, they didn't look particularly good in that livery and they were soon changed. Maroon and silver was the livery introduced for the uh, initial T3 RPLF, the low floor T3s, and a batch of T3 RPs was done so they could be towed and in the same livery, though that's fallen by the wayside if you look at the picture on the top right. And a couple of the T3 RPVs, 8159 and 8160, were also done. Red, white, grey and black was the livery used on the T6s from new, um, the KT8 D5s were paint, repainted into it, um, and uh, all of the KT8 D5s until recently have been in that livery. Uh, probably divide opinion like Marmite, I think, uh, but um, so far, uh, five. 14 Ts and three KT8 D5s have been painted in the Prague Integrated Transport uh, Authority livery known as PID. Um, quite often see the livery described uh, with brackets STU, close brackets PID. Um, I mean, it looks all right on the T14, I think, but on the slab sided KT8, it looks a bit like somebody ran out of paint, but. The jury's out on that. I'll leave you to decide that for yourselves. Skoda 14 Ts were delivered in this red and silver livery. When they were rebuilt as 14 T4Ms, they got this uh, red and silver with a black line to, along the uh, side of the tram to, to hide the differences in height. And I think it looks a lot better, and I have to say that because um, uh, my son designed, <laughs> designed the livery for them, um, and they took him up on it. So uh, I quite like that livery for obvious reasons. The 14, uh, 15 T's were delivered in uh, black, red, and silver, which suits the livery, I think. Uh, suits the type of tram. And the 15 T4s, had the yellow fronts and, and white sides uh, to differentiate them. There's other detail changes such as the headlights. So in conclusion, um, it's a very modern forward thinking company. It's proactive, it sees things happening, um, it makes sensible decisions about what to do with the trams, it's watching the demographic all the time. Um, new suburbs require new trams. It's certainly on top of maintenance. I don't think I've been there since 2008 where the whole system has been opened um, because of relaying track, putting in new junctions. Um, 
you know, very much keeping on top of it. When you've got to run that many trams, you've got to keep on top of your maintenance. It's very much system based. Uh, Pankrat's depot, as I said earlier, is um, it's got automatic tram location. Um, they're playing with, uh, as is Blackpool, with dynamic auto stop, um, which slams the, the brakes on and puts down the electronic uh, electromagnetic trap brake if somebody walks in front of the tram. And this year they've got a, a new app, um, which is brilliant. I, I, it's worth looking at. It's called mapper.pid.cz and you can type in the tram number and it'll tell you what route it's on and where it is. You can type in a driver's duty number and it'll tell you where he, he or she is. And it does it for buses and electric buses and trolley buses, etc. And they are very much into integrated transport, even if it means that awful livery appears on trams. Though they have got dispensation that the T3s will never, ever go in that livery. Uh, and only new trams and refurbishments will go into that livery. So they're moving to be very environmentally friendly. They want to get people out of the cars. And basically, it's a superb system that I recommend to anybody to go and have a look at. And um, that's the end, as it was for 8506, after a refused truck ran into it. <laughs>